Hey guys, welcome back to another Climax Combo video. I'm Checkers. And I'm Licious Kid. And we are doing another top 10 video, this time with Dengeki Bunko. 30th anniversary. Ooh. Uh, tons of set, tons of different series in this set. It's a huge list. And it actually has a bunch of different like sub themes or archetypes yeah. within the set. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of different routes you can take this set. Um, there's clearly design archetypes within each color that Bushi is trying to incentivize for you to play, which is mm -hmm. really neat. Mm -hmm. um, this set is super huge, 150 cards. Yep. Two trial decks. Mm -hmm. So it was hard to pick 10. Uh, a lot of cards synergize with other cards. So we'll, so it's more like a top 12, top 15. But we did our best to pick out cards we thought were fun and strong. We tried to mix up the list with both strong cards and fun cards. Because if this list is just all the top 10 strong cards, we just all talk about the double R's. For sure. Mm -hmm. Just just trying to keep things spicy. Uh, if you guys don't know, this entire set is Dengeki Bunko. So you can run this entire set together. But there are some cards in here that work with previous sets in the same universe. Like uh -huh. SAO. There's SAO cards in here that you can run with the current SAO set and Shauna with Shauna, et cetera, et cetera. So in this list, we're just going to kind of focus on them and the Denkeki set because mm -hmm. we'll be honest, we don't know all the sets here. Like yeah. I don't remember anything about Index, so I can't tell you the synergies with the old Index set. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a ton of sets in here and each set really only gets like uh, three or four cards. Mm -hmm. Just way too much sets in this. But it's a really cool set. Um, re I really appreciate that Bushiro does something like this because I think it's really fun. Yep, for sure. Mm -hmm. And with that long intro out of the way, we'll get started to our number 10. We have, first of all, this 3-2 Shauna, um, 10k base, heals on play, has experience 6. When this attacks, if you have the door in your climax area and you have experience 6 and you have two or more other characters, you can discard two cards. If you do, deal 4 to your opponent. If that's cancelled, choose up to X characters in your opponent's rating room. And you shuffle them back in your opponent's deck where X is a number of Dengeki Bunko or Flame characters. So this card, I think, is pretty sick. Um, because it's synergized with Dengeki and Flame, it works with the old set too. Mm -hmm. We kind of know Shauna because our friend Domo does have Shauna and Shauna does use experience. So it seems strong. It's a strong standalone card. Yeah, the effect is very solid. It's and cool. Cost is pretty light too, just Ditch uh -huh. 2. You're running Shauna as of right now. They're getting a new set later in the year. But they're eight gates. I assume they're gonna stay eight gates. Mm -hmm. So uh, discard two should be pretty easy for the Shauna decks. Cool. Yep. On hit win. On cancel win. Because the next, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you know we love that stuff. No outplaying this. Your opponent cancels. Uh, the next one is that much scarier. So something's gonna stick. <laughs> A cool card. For our number nine, we have this yellow event. Two three. If you have two or less Dengeki Bunko characters, this cannot be played from hand. Uh, and it's a, you can use it as a counter. When it, choose one of your Dengeki Bunko characters, this turn it gets plus 1500 power and the following ability of when this card's battle opponent is reversed, you may deal three damage to your opponent. Uh, so this card's really cool. It lets you burn on your opponent's turn uh, defensively. So it's actually pretty scary and something your opponent has to keep in mind when they are swinging into you it's uh you can be punished taking three three cost it's a pretty pretty nasty event i like it i like it in standby and you can do that mm -hmm. level two so it works with the standby decks yeah it's a neat card dangerous for our number eight we have this level zero sasha in red double r 1k base when this attacks reveal the top card of your deck if that card is level one or higher choose one of your opponent's front row level zero or lower characters you may send it to waiting room second effect is when this is sent from stage to waiting room you can discard a card if you do look at up to four cards from the top of your deck choose up to one level one or higher character among them show it to your opponent add it to your hand send the rest to waiting room so this level zero is very strong and super good in most decks, especially in standby, since you need to hit level one or higher cards, uh, your deck will have a lot of those. But getting to potentially pop one of your opponent's characters uh, pretty consistently is pretty nuts. And on top of that, having a nice mill effect is just, you know, doubling down onto really 
crazy effects. So very strong double R. It's crazy. Potential, <laughs> potential plus one, deny on reverse effects and mill. Mm-hmm. Like this card is pretty overloaded. It can dominate the level zero game. Mm-hmm. On to our number seven, we have the zero zero Annals from the trial deck. This card's pretty neat. He's three five power. His first effect, all your opponent's characters get uh, paid to Encore. The second effect is when this card's battle opponent is reversed. If you have no character in your back row, look at top two cards of your deck, choose up to one level zero lower character, then get Google character from amongst them, place it on any slot in the back row. So the rest of the waiting room. So 0035, oversized, already pretty good. The second effect, when he kills something, you get potentially plus one and you mill at the same time, which you want to do at level zero. So, so it's it's pretty unique, I think. Mm-hmm. Zero zero three five that can potentially plus you one. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a really neat TD card. Like no matter what zero you hit, you're still plusing one. So it's like why not? Yeah. Mm-hmm. For our number six, we have a pair of cards. First off, the level three Miyuki and Tatsuya in blue, double R, ten K base. When this is placed on stage from hand, look up to X cards from the top of your deck. Choose up to one card from among them, add it to your hand, and send the rest to waiting room, where X is equal to the number of your opponent's characters. Second effect is climax combo with the pants at the start of your attack phase. If you have that pants in your climax area, this is in your front row, and you have three or more other characters. Until the end of your opponent's next turn, this gains one of the following two abilities of your choice. The first one is... When this attacks, you can pay two, discard a card to deal three damage to your opponent, and then this turn, this gets plus 2k power. Second uh, ability you can choose from is at the start of your opponent's attack phase, choose one of your opponent's characters. This turn, it gets minus two soul. The second card is another Miyuki and Tatsuya, level zero, 1500 base. Climax combo with the same pants. During your climax phase, when you play the pants, you can pay one, send this card to waiting room, if you are level 2 or higher, choose up to one level 3 Miyuki and Tatsuya in your hand. Place it on stage in this card's former slot. And second effect is a startup. You can rest this card to give one of your characters plus 1k power. Um, and that card, this level 0 Miyuki and Tatsuya is kind of what makes the level 3 actually pretty good because it can come out early. These effects that do minus 2 soul uh, is way better at level 2. I mean only play about level two for the most part and it kind of just makes it pretty cool and the cool thing about the miyuki and tatsuya level three is that it also doubles as your finish you can use your resources in the at closer to the end of the game to deal three damage to your opponent which is really good and to mention another support card for the level three we have this two one miyuki and tatsuya 5k base uh, this card, this cannot be targeted by your opponent's effects. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> this cannot be targeted by your opponent's effects. It's a 2k in front to level 3 or higher characters. And the last effect is when your other level 3 Miyuki and Tatsuya is reversed, you can discard two blue cards from your hand to rest that character and reverse the character, your, your opponent's character instead. Um, so... Overall, the support cards combined make this level 3 Miyuki and Tatsuya pretty scary. Uh, 12k base, you can minus 2 soul your opponent, you can stack them all on one character, reduce how much damage you're taking at level 2, and as the game progresses, you can start to finish with the same combo, so pretty neat. These versatile cards are always pretty fun. And uh, the combo, you can get owned by Miyuki or you could get owned by Tatsuya, it's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, because the defensive effects. one, the defensive one is Tatsuya, the uh-huh. offensive one is Miyuki. So I think that the flavor aspect is there too. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty. Now it's even cooler. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, guys, for our number five, we have the level three Asuna double R in yellow. Ten K base. When this is placed on stage from hand, you may heal one. Climax combo with the choice when this attacks. And you have two or more other characters. You can discard a Dengeki Bunko or Avatar or Net character from your hand. If you do, this turn, this gains the following ability. This ability can only be activated up to twice per turn. When this card's damage is canceled, you may deal two damage to your opponent. And a special note for this card specifically, it's the spelling for Asuna is different on this card than 
previous asanas in other SAO sets. So there might be some missed synergies there. Not too sure where that's applicable, but it's a note. Uh, and yeah, overall, this is number five because it's a pretty sick combo. Um, very light cost for potentially having extra instances of dealing two damage to your opponent. Uh, makes your damage stick a little bit easier. And I personally like this card a lot as well because of my experience with SAO. I play SAO. And this combo is pretty good and more towards my liking compared to some of the other combos in SAO. But yeah, it's okay. a really good option still for the set, though, as just Dengeki Bunko. It's probably the best choice finisher for Dengeki. Yeah. And I think that would translate over well to SAO. Mm-hmm. Should have just gave this to Kuroyuki Hime or something. Mm -mm. Don't give SAO any more toys. Yes. They had plenty of time in the sudden. Nope. Yep. For our number four, we have the 00 double R Nano. Um, 500 power. Two effects. If you have five or more cards in your hand, this gets plus 2500 power, the following ability. At the start of your opponent's attack phase, move this to an empty front row center slot. Second effect, when this card's battle opponent is reversed, you can draw a card, discard a card. Pretty simple effect, but the fact that she's 3k intercepts and she draw a ditch on reverse is why we think it's pretty powerful. Really strong level zero card that you always want to open up with. Yeah, this card's nuts. Mm -hmm. This is the type of card I would always be looking for an excuse to run. Yeah, no, the setup and the domination is real. No, God. For our number three, we have the legendary Kirino. I'm sure many people notorious yes notorious thank you that's a better word <laughs> the infamous the notorious the one and only kirino she's finally here in y Schwartz, and she's pretty cool so this card is 10k base heals on play and she has a combo when she attacks if you have the gold bar in your climax area you have two more of the characters look at top two cards of your opponent's deck choose up to two cards from amongst them put them on top of your opponent's deck in any order and send the rest to waiting room then you can discard three cards if you do, this turn, this gains the following ability of at the end of this card's attack, you may deal two damage to your opponent. Real quick, we want to go over just one other card with her because I think this card is what makes this Kirino super sick. This is 2-1, Kirino and Kyosuke assist, 4-5 power. Um, it's got two effects. First, it's a level assist in front. Secondly, if a climax of the gold bar is in your climax area, all your 3-2 Kirinos Gain gold bar trigger. That is just so cool. <laughs> That's so cool. Anyway, that alone makes this card super sick. But this Kirino is also super sick. Um, the combo is pretty powerful. Even like you don't have enough hand size, you could still do the check top two mm -hmm. for no cost, which is already pretty good. Yep. But after she attacks, then you can, or then you can ditch three and then you uh burn the two mm -hmm. you still have to ditch yes. three before she attacks yes but i mean you always get the check top two yeah you check the top cool. two and then you can decide if you want to it's discard the three cool. it's pretty sick if your opponent needs only two more damage to die and they have a level three in front you can side with it just check top two leave two characters there dish three it's guaranteed game over mm -hmm. yes so there are some situations where you can kind of guarantee lethal with this Kirino. So, I mean, it's Kirino. The combo's pretty strong. <laughs> and she has that cool synergy. Like, this is such a cool card. Definitely, uh, Bushi's incentivizing this eight gold bar deck with Kirino. And it seems pretty strong. So, yeah. Um, she's definitely the gold bar finisher of choice. And she's really cool. There's other couple synergies behind this archetype, but we're really not going to get into that. But it's a strong card. For sure. And for our number two, this is my personal favorite card on this list. Ooh. I don't really know much about the series, but I think the card is very cool. It's 3-2-10-5 Tomoka. She has a couple effects. She has experience. When this attacks, if you have a copy of this in your level zone, mill two, deal X damage to your opponent. X is equal to the number of level two or higher cards milled. She combos with standby. At the start of your attack phase, if you have the standby in your climax area, and this is in your front row, and you have five or less cards in hand, you choose one of the following two effects and resolve it. You can either stand this, or um, you can pay one, send the climax to the waiting room. If you have four or more other Denki Kibunko characters, you can pay the cost, 
if you do deal three damage to your opponent. There is a whole bunch of strategies revolving around this Tomoka, and there's definitely a standby list that Bushi's incentivizing with it. Really not going to go over it because that's just so many cards, but just keep in mind that there's other synergies that make this Tomoka much more powerful. But as a standalone card, I think this card is really cool, and Haiki makes me want to buy this deck just for this Tomoka. <laughs> I mean, on attack, potentially burning your opponent is always strong with no with nothing attached to it. And the combo is good. You can either combo, have her attack immediately the turn she comes out because of how the timing works, or if you have a couple Tomokas on the board or one on the board, you can just start burning three damage to your opponent for paying one, killing off the Climax. It's pretty light cost too. You only do one at a time because you got to kill the Climax, but I think the tempo and like the pacing that this card gives you is strong. Like you play our level two, you attack, you start burning them. Next turn, you play another one. The first one's already burning with the mill. The second one can now, like, you know, just start killing mm -hmm. them with the combo. So it's also, you can you can bring one out with one already on stage. Yes. Stand that one that you just brought out and then burn with the second one that you already had. Yes, you're right. It's so like, uh, it, like, stacks on top of each other mm -hmm. as you get more. Yeah, and they're all burning potentially one or two every time they attack. Yep. So it's pretty freaking lethal. The only downside is you got five or less cards in hand, but still, it seems really strong. That's the standby. You got to commit the big booty. Mm -hmm. and That's cool. Nothing is bigger booty than Tomoka. Than small basketball lollies. Basketball lollies, yeah. yes. That's all I know about the series. Basketball <laughs> lollies. And that alone is sick enough. On to some honorable mentions. Our first one, we have this 2-1 Ike Bukuro. 7k base, yellow, uncommon. For each of your other front row copies of this card, it gets plus 1k power and plus 1 soul. And for each of your opponent's back row characters, this gets plus 1k power. So you have a full front row of these Ike Bukuros. They're all 11k base. Um, your other. Yes. So they're all 11k base, and they're all three soul, which is the tightest part. Three soul is pretty insane. Two ones, three souls, dude. Oh my god! You don't you play a climax four soul? That's absurd. that's that's too much. The, if crazy. one of them sticks, your opponent is like so far behind on level two. Ooh. It's it's cool. This is a funny card, and why it's in our honorable mentions? It's it's pretty legit, Loki. <laughs> it's pretty legit. Even just two. They're both two soul. Two one two soul is already pretty good. Yeah. So two one three soul. It's that much juicier. And that wasn't enough soul for you guys. We had this two one Lena from the trial deck. Um, five five power. If you have three or more other characters, she gets plus four five power and hand encore. So she's already 10k base. And her other effect is when she attacks, you can pay one discard a card. If you do, choose three of your Dengeki Buku characters. It gets plus five hundred power and plus one soul. Cool. <laughs> Two one ten k. With hand encore is already pretty decent, but the fact that you can just randomly give all your characters plus one souls like the best part of this card. Nasty. Pretty nasty. So. Oh, include them in your standby builds in case you want to push for damage. Oh yeah. Oh. And she's got hand encore. She's already two one ten five hand encore. So. Yeah. Oh, the discarding a card works with Tomoka because if you need to have five or less cards. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Cool. And for our last honorable mention, if we just love Soul so much, <laughs> we got this last one, 002K Hinata from the trial deck. When this is placed on stage from hand, you mill two. If there's a climax amongst those cards, she gets plus two Soul. And when this is placed on stage from hand, you can discard a card if you do draw a card. That's not right. Her being 2K base with the on play dish draw is already pretty cool and works well with standby. But milling two. To get plus two soul, I think it's just so sick. <laughs> like, dude. <laughs> you swing with three soul. Yeah. At level zero, you That's play three of balance. these. Play a gate. If they all hit a climax, it's game over for oh your opponent. <laughs> uh, more of a funny card. I don't know if people are going to run it, but I think it's cool. I think it's more fun than the on-play mill two. If there's like a climax, you like salvage a card. We've seen it a lot. So yeah. something a little different. And I think it's quite powerful. Pretty sick. And lastly, for our number one, we have, you guessed it, the 2-1 Yukina, 5k base, in blue, double R. 
If all your characters are Dengeki Bunko, this gets plus 5k power, making her 10k base. Climax combo with the pants. When the pants is placed in your climax area, if this is in your front row, search your deck for up to one copy of this card. Place it on stage in any slot. Shuffle your deck afterwards. And the last effect, when this card's battle opponent is reversed, if you have a climax in your climax area, reveal the top card of your deck. If that card is level one or higher, add it to hand. But that's not all. There is this level one Kojo, 3k base. During your turn, this gets 2k power. When this card's battle opponent is reversed, if you have a climax in your climax area, reveal the top card of your deck. If that card is level one or higher, add it to hand. And last effect is a startup. Send this card to clock. Choose up to one of the 2-1 Yukina in your hand. Place it on stage in this card's former slot. This guy <laughs> is what makes the Yukina crazy good. She can come out at level one very easily. You just need one of each of them in your hand. You clock him, bring her out, and with her combo, you can bring another Yukina from your deck. There is support to make sure that you have Yukinas in your deck to make sure you're bringing more out. And then they both have the same uh, effect when they kill something. You can check top and potentially plus to your hand without needing a specific combo uh but yeah overall i mean this yukina is very strong kind of reminds us of alice if it if alice was fair you know they can you can bring her out you have a strong 2-1 10k uh that's already a very high number it's very low cost to you and your hand you should be able to get some advantage with those pretty decent numbers you plus from them killing stuff it's just a very solid and valuable card and combo to run. And honestly worth running without the pants combo because you can still bring her out. You might not be able to get more of her out from your deck, but it's still a, a 10k costless. Pretty much. You just ditch it card. Yeah, like she's strong without it, the combo. So mm -hmm. she's... You can still plus. That's what makes it kind of crazy, the fact that she... Has like two climax combos. Yeah. And the other one's not tied to anything. Mm -hmm. And the Kucho's good too. Like, what the heck? 105k he and like he can potentially plus you with any climax. Like, yep. these don't scale that poorly is what makes them also much more viable. Because sometimes mm -hmm. these cards scale poorly later. But yeah. These guys, they're they're still put it in work. Yeah. So it's uh it's pretty good. Yeah, very, very strong. Very unique too, so. Seems fun. If I had this set, this is what I would be running. If I had this set, I'd probably be running this too. Seems fun. <laughs> <laughs> but that is it for our top 10 for this set, guys. Like we said, it was pretty hard to just pick 10 out of like 190 cards. But we think this is it for our list. Overall, it seems like a really fun set. Mm -hmm. Very unique. I really like um, the idea behind the set. I mean, there's so many... You know, so many cool animes that you could just never bring into the set into Weiss, but now you can kind of dabble in a whole bunch of sets, mm -hmm. um, you know, and incorporate them in Weiss shorts. So it's really cool. Yeah, it's a neat set. One of those love, fan love, what? Kind of <laughs> like something that the fans don't expect, but like we appreciate. Kind of yeah. like Puzzles and Dragons. Like, yeah, I don't think anyone expected that, but it's like so cool and unique and obviously very powerful right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but a little too powerful, but... <laughs> You know, we, I think it's cool when Bushi brings a set that no one expects. And it's just, just, it's just awesome. Yeah. For really, sure. really hoping Bushi does more with Dengeki because I would love to see the Dengeki universe kind of expanding and growing because it's cool. Cool. But that's it for this list, guys. If you have any cards that you think are very cool, let us know in the comments below. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.